The last thing we did in section 2.1 was look at this bar graph, which we said was a relative frequency bar graph because the y-axis here, the vertical axis, is labeled with the relative frequencies, not the actual counts. That would be just a frequency bar graph. If you notice this variable that we're actually displaying, color is, in this instance, a categorical variable. These different bars are pertaining to the categories of color. That's going to be true anytime we're dealing with a bar graph. Bar graphs with these separate bars for each category, bar graphs are for categorical variables. I mentioned earlier that humans are very visual learners and it's easier for us to understand data when we see it in a visual form. Here's another type of visual representation of some data and the name of this kind of display is a side-by-side -side bar chart or we might call it a bar graph. Those are the same things. Let's just talk about how to look at something like this because getting information from a visual display is a skill. So what's going on here? We have a variable name called marital status. That's one variable being displayed here. And that is a categorical variable. Every bar chart always shows a categorical variable. And we've got their four different categories we're seeing. The y-axis, another place you want to be sure you look at immediately, is showing us the relative frequency. Another way we could think about that relative frequency is that these are the, the proportion of people in our sample that had these different marital statuses. We have two bars here for every category of marital status, which are reflecting two different time periods. These light blue bars are from the year 1990, and the dark blue bars are from the year 2006. So we're actually seeing two variables here at the same time. This is a variable time. Time is a variable, it changes. So we've got time with two levels, 1990 and 2006. We have marital status with four different possible values here. And when we display the marital status, for each different time period, we call that a side-by-side -side bar chart. And you can see it gives us a bit more information. It gives us what's changing over time. How did the proportion of people who were married change from 1990 to 2006? Well, if we look at this bar here, it looks like it decreased by a little bit. Fewer people were married in 2006 than in 1990. It's more accurate actually to say that a smaller proportion of people were married in 2006 than 1990 because that's what we're looking at here. We're looking at the relative frequencies. Another way to represent a categorical variable or a qualitative variable is with a visual display known as a pie chart. You actually see these quite a bit in the newspaper and in news. There are circles. This is not a good circle. This is even worse. With various pieces of pie here, they look like pizzas and we call them pie charts. Each one of these slices is representing a category of data. Maybe a better way to describe that is to say that they are showing the possible values. For example, if this was a color variable, each pie slice would be showing a different color. Here's an example from the book where they want us to take this same marital status variable that we've been working with a bit with these four levels, these four categories, these four possible values, those all mean the same thing. I could call these the levels if, if I want to. They are the four possible values of this categorical variable. Like I said, there really is a lot of terminology, but we use it over and over again. The more customed you are to it, the easier this course will get for you, I promise. Again, you can just think of frequency as the count. These are whole numbers. And what they want us to do is make what's called a pie chart of of this data, which is what we just talked about. Let's think about doing that. Okay, we need to make a pie chart of this data. Before we can start doing that, you really want to take the time to be sure you know what you're looking at. One thing that confused me originally when I was looking at this data was that this is frequency here, which we know are counts, like whole numbers. 
but we're still getting decimals. And I was not quite sure what to make of that. I honestly thought that this data might have had a typo in it. But if you read back carefully as to what you're looking at, we're looking at the marital status of US residents and these numbers are in millions. That is hugely important. What that means is that this 55.3 is 55.3 million people. So we're not taking fractions of people here or anything like that. We're representing a lot of people. And if we think about the total number of people here, by adding up all these numbers, we get 219.7 million people. That's a lot of people. And that makes more sense because we're, talk we're talking about U.S. residents, and that might be everybody in the United States that's 18 years of age or older. We have 300 million people in the United States, so these numbers seem to make sense here. So we need to make a pie chart out of them, and pie charts show the proportions of each of these categories, and right now we have decimals. So we're going to need to convert those decimals into proportions. That's a pretty easy process. So just like we did before, we need to create relative frequencies here. Let's add another column to our table here, a, a relative frequency column. And so to make those relative frequencies, we just take the frequency and put it over the total, which is this 219.7. So we're gonna have four fractions here, and they're all going to have 219.7 in the bottom of them. So, okay, let's make my relative frequencies. I'm going to have a fraction with this 55.3 in the top and 219.7 in the bottom. And that's going to be the same for all of these. I'm going to put the frequency for this category. This is married people. And that's going to be divided by my total, 219.7. Frequency on the top divided by the total number on the bottom again. And then one last time, sorry, my fractions look a little gross. That happens. You don't worry about it sometimes. Stats is a little messy. Divided by 219.7. Okay, so we've got our four fractions here. To make our pie chart, we just need to convert all those to decimals. Let's look at the pie chart. So here's our old data with my same credit handwriting and what they've done here in the book is taken these fractions and changed them into, into percentages and also rounded to the nearest percent. That was their choice. They probably just thought that it made it a little bit easier to look at. There's always a question in this class of how much should I round? I always tell people that you rarely get into trouble if you are more precise. So when in doubt, be more precise than less precise. Our book here has chosen to round these to the nearest percent. Never Married, which they're coloring in blue, is going to get 25% of the pie, which we can see here. Married is going to get a full 58% of the pie, which appears down here. And Widowed gets 6% and Divorced gets 11%. Let's take a moment here and just view this thing in its full glory. The last thing I'll say is that most statisticians, myself included, tend to prefer bar charts to pie charts. And the reason for that is about how your eyes process small differences. It's easier for you to tell a small difference in the height of two bars than it is to determine the difference in the width of slices of pie. So generally bar graphs are a little bit easier for you to tell quickly what is going on with how the different categories are relating to each other.